so this video is the follow-up to the analog random number generator. We're going to be looking at both the combinational logic and sequential logic segments of this circuit. Both of those are in the digital design realm. So we've done analog design for our analog section, and now we're going to focus on those two digital sections. So let's take a look at those. Okay, everyone, so this lesson is on 1.2.7, which is the uh, digital component of the random number generator. So we are going to be looking at the block diagram again and looking how we transition from the analog section to the digital section of this circuit in this presentation. So you guys are familiar with this. We saw this in the previous section. So you've already built the analog section and that clock signal that comes out of the analog section is what goes into our sequential logic section. That sequential logic section on every pulse of the clock um, increments a binary count from one to six and then it repeats. That then goes into the combinational logic section, which encodes the binary count into a seven segment display. So as you saw in the analog section, the output from that clock signal is a slowly oscillating uh, clock signal. So in other words, we start with really tight waveforms and eventually we end up with very long, low frequency waveforms. And that's what generates into our different numbers and then moves into the end result on the display. So here's the schematic diagram for the sequential logic section. So this is that middle section in the diagram. So we start with a three bit counter. You guys have worked with counters before, so this isn't really that new. Um, so we're working with a three bit counter. The clock signal enters here and then it travels through to come out to A, B, and C. So again, we have our set and reset logic down here. So this is what changes our count range. Um, so that way we get that one to six range that we need. So this is what we would refer to as a functional test. So this is the next six slides are gonna rotate you through um, what these actually look like. So this is a logic output of one um, in this. And so when you see a red line, that means we have a high signal. And when we have a green line, that means it's a low signal. So right here, the C should be lit. I apologize for the graphic, but the C should be lit, which would indicate a zero, zero, one or a one in binary. Okay, we then have a functional test for two. So that would mean that A is zero, B is one, C is zero. So you can see the red traveling to light up the B indicator. We then have three where B and C are both lit. Four is just A, so that's one, zero, zero. Then we have one, zero, one, so A and C are lit. A and B, so one, one, zero, which gives us our six. So then we have the combinational section. So the dot, so the digital section of the circuit is the sequential and combinational logic portions. And this is your schematic for the combinational logic. So that last section. Now, if we were multi-sim live, we would be able to use these probes to create a seven segment display that would indicate, um, we're going to have to be a little creative in multi-sim live in order to get that to indicate. But basically you have A, B, and C coming into a sequence of inverters and gates and OR gates to control the output signal over here. So you just want to make sure that because L1, L5, L2, L6, L3, and L7 are always together, um, you only need one combinational logic circuit for each pair. So because we have things that are always lighting up together, as in like one, two, and three are always lighting up together, seven, six, and five always lighting up together in a lot of cases, um, we can combine some of that logic. So here's the truth table for how we indicate different symbols. So obviously when we have a 001 in ABC, we want it to be so that group L4 is lighting up. So that gives us our one, okay? Then we have our two, which are the two dots here, because remember we're working with a die essentially. So, um, so if we're looking at a dice, we then have the two indicators here. We have three, four, five, and six. So if you look at this truth table, you'll notice that repetitive binary pattern that we've seen before, 000, 001, 010, 011. And that's because we're counting. Um, if you look through, you'll notice that we do have kind of a pattern inside of this binary, but it's not as sequential because we're working with the different outputs in the different physical geographical locations. So again, you want to note that because we have some things that always let up together, we can group our logic in that way. So what you're seeing here are those different groupings inside of the truth table. 
So now let's look at a functional test of our combinational logic. Again, a red line means that we have a high signal and that green line means that that is inactive or low. So we are going to, so if we look here, um, L4 is indicated and that's our number one. Then we light up both L3 and L7 for two. One, four, and five are for three. Uh, let's see, we have one, seven, three, and five, and that gives us our four, so our postage stamp four corner situation. And then our last, and then we have a six. I apologize that five is not in here, but it's the same general logic as the four. We're just adding L4 into that. Um, and then six is L1, L2, L3, and then L7, L6, and L5. So realistically, we are not in multi-SIM, the desktop version. So we're not gonna be able to use probes. We're actually gonna be looking at putting LEDs in. And when LEDs are embedded into the circuit like this, they indicate what during simulation by these little arrows lighting or not lighting. So we will be having to track our outputs in this manner um, when we build the circuit. And you'll see that inside of the activity guide. But basically the sequence works the exact same way. It's just a matter of is the LED lit or not lit. So here we're looking at, do, 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 that's a four. Okay, so then this is what your circuit would look like with the sequential and combinational logic. Now remember you also have the analog section that you're gonna tack on to this as well because that's where this whole thing starts. So this is a very long circuit. Um, you're definitely gonna wanna have to change some of your properties inside of Multisim Live. But essentially what we're seeing here is the clock signal coming in. We have our three bit, three bit binary counter which is then coming through into our combinational logic section. So we have those three outputs that are then coming into the sequence of inverters and gates and OR gates, and that is controlling the LED outputs. So we're going from an analog signal to a generated binary number to an output of an LED display. Okay, so that wraps up our digital design component of the random number generator. You're now going to build those in Multisim Live, and let's get started.